Before we look at our next example, where we have our IFRS 9 investment that change into a subsidiary, I want us to just quickly look at the IFRS 9 principles, the orange block on your screen. If there is an IFRS 9 investment, which will normally be either at fair value through profit or loss or at fair value through OCI, IFRS 9 indicates us that when there is a change, we need to remeasure the interest at fair value. And then important, IFRS 9 paragraph B5.7.1, transfer any cumulative fair value adjustments to your retained earnings. Okay, so guys, just quickly breathe, sit back and look at the screen for me. If you look at your screen, you will identify that there is a few similar rules repeating itself here. Rule number one for our level two guys, left side of your screen, left column, remeasure your retained interest at fair value. Then, RFRS 3, paragraph 42, remeasure your previous held equity at fair value. Then, RFRS 9, remeasure at fair value. Next important rule is your red blocks. Block number one is your IS28, previous amounts in OCI to retained earnings. Block number two, IFRS 3, paragraph 42, previous amounts to retained earnings. Number three, if there's any amounts previously recognized relating to fair value adjustments, transfer to retained earnings. Okay, now let's have a look at our next example. Entity A acquired 30% in Entity B on 1 January 2020 at cost of 85,000, which is deemed to be the fair value on that date. Entity A acquired an additional 30% of the shares in Entity B for 130,000 on 1 July 2021, deemed to be the fair value on the state. Assume control as per IFRS 3 and that this purchase is the business combination as per, sorry, control as per IFRS 10 and business combination as per IFRS 3. The fair value of the previously held investment was as follows on the different dates. On 31 December 2020, 105,000 and 1 July, 130,000. The previous held, therefore guys, we're able to identify, remember, the previously held is the 30%. Okay. Entity A accounts for the investments in associates and subsidiaries at cost in terms of IS27. Entity A classifies this investment as a financial asset in terms of IFRS 9 in its separate financial statements and irrecoverably elected to present subsequent changes in the fair value of the investment in other comprehensive income in a mark-to-market reserve. Entity A elected to transfer any cumulative gains or losses within equity in terms of IFRS 9.B 5.7.1 year in 31 December ignore all taxes and assume no consolidation occurred on date of change in control and then perform the journal entries in both records only relating to the information provided. Right, step number one, as always, identify the change. We are able to identify that this is a normal IFRS 9 investment, an additional 30% were purchased and this is now a subsidiary. Therefore, we know that we need to apply IFRS 3, paragraph 42. Step 2, include our timeline. Right, now think with me and focus. At the top of our timeline, in the separate records of Entity A, this is our IFRS 9 investment. Therefore, if you look at my timeline, IFRS 9, financial asset. At the top, then this becomes a subsidiary from 1 July 2021. Now, if we think about initial recognition in the separate records of Entity A, Entity A will debit the investment, remember financial asset, at cost, and the cost was an amount of 85,000 provided to us in the scenario, and credit bank. Then we know at year end, Entity A will have to remeasure 
this investment, or not remeasure, but measure the investment at fair value. Therefore, we are able to identify the cost is 85,000 and the fair value of that 30% they've indicated to us, remember, is 105,000. Therefore, we will have a 20,000 adjustment. And in the separate records, we will have to debit the financial asset, investment in financial asset, with a 20,000 and credit our mark to market reserve with 20,000. Now, on date of change, 1 July 2021, the standard indicates to us RFRS 3 paragraph 42 as well as RFRS 9 that we now need to remeasure our previous health equity, the 30% before the change occur, guys. Therefore, we now know that the previous health equity is 105,000. This should now be remeasured to 130,000. Therefore, an additional 25,000. Right. Therefore, we debit the financial asset with the 25,000. And we credit our mark to market reserve with the 25,000. Now, and this is in the separate records. Therefore, we are applying RFRS 9 in the separate records. Now, on 1 July 2021, in the separate records, Entity A purchased the additional 30%. Therefore, journal number 4 will be to debit the investment with 130,000 and credit bank with 130,000. Therefore, in the separate records, this investment will now have a balance of 260,000. Because when we look at this, we have journal number one, the 85,000. We have journal number two, the 20,000. We have journal number three, which is the 25,000, and we now have journal number four, which is the 130,000. Now, when we add all of this, this will be 260,000. Right, now, look at your group records. Think, guys, for the first section here, do we have anything in our group? No, because this is just a financial asset investment in the separate records of entity A. But on 1 July 2021, we now need to apply RFRS 3 paragraph 42. What does this paragraph tell us to do? If we refer to this, it indicates to us that we need to remeasure our previous equity at fair value. But do you agree with me that we've already done this based on RFRS 9? If we look at our journal entry, guys, this one here, our forest nine. This previous health equity is already at 130,000, which is the fair value. Therefore, I'm not going to include this again because on this date, if we include our at acquisition journal entry, look at this, if we include our at acquisition date journal entry, you agree with me that this investment is already at fair value the 260,000. Okay, so this is your first rule here, but you need to identify we've already done this at the top. Then the second rule we need to remember if there's any amount in our mark two market reserve, we need to take this to our OCI. Therefore, now let's have a look in journal number one. Nothing. I'm going to make use of pink, guys. Nothing. Journal number two. Yes, we have credited the mark to market reserve. Therefore, we have a balance of 20,000. Journal entry number three. Yes, we've credited the mark to market reserve with 25,000. Therefore, currently in the mark to market reserve, there is 20,000 from journal number two. There's 25,000 from Journal number three. Remember, this is from a group perspective. From a group, this is now a 
Oh, sorry, I wanted to say associate. No, this is a subsidiary. Therefore, if this is a subsidiary, we cannot have a mark-to-market -market reserve line item because we're going to consolidate. Okay, therefore, we have a total of 45,000 that we now need to take out. How do we take this out? We debit a uh, mark-to-market reserve with a 45,000. And we credit our retained earnings with the 45,000 because this is our rule. Right. Okay. Now, on 1 July 20.21, 20 this is an associate. Right. We now need to follow our rules as per RFRS 3 and RFRS 10. Therefore, on this date, we will now include our at acquisition journal entry. And if we include our at acquisition journal entry, you will remember that we will have to then debit. No, sorry guys, I'm lying to you. We will have to credit the investment in the subsidiary with 260000 as per the top. Okay, so if you want to summarize this, guys, like we've done with the previous example, how do we summarize this? At the top, your journal entry in your separate records. Separate financials, I'm writing this, bottom left corner, will be to revalue your previous held shares. Number one, we measure our previous percentage at value. Then in our group, when there's a change, we don't do anything because this is already at fair value as per our rules of RFRS 3 paragraph 42, but it comes through due to RFRS 9. And then the second rule here will be any amount OCI to your retained earnings.